Hello everybody, so today we're doing the watercolour nude um, and I don't know if people know my work from the past this is one from the vaults, this was done about, I don't know, about 15 years ago it's just a print of the original um, and it shows that I really like to use strong colours when doing watercolour nudes what I used to do is just actually work up good life drawings I had where I had taken a note of the shading on the model and then I would work from my drawings rather than work to, from the model on the spot but it's a good way of getting into being able to do watercolours. Painting life in watercolours is always a bit of emergency. You're waiting for bits to dry and this doesn't work and you put the wash on wrong. So actually having a more controlled environment in your studio works very well. And uh, so this is actually the style I had then, which is just basically two or three colours. So here we have paints grey, burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Now I think about it and I think that might be a bit of burnt umber. But generally I kept to a very limited palette. And what I would do is really take note of the pattern of light. So that's one from the vaults. Um, so here's one I did more recently. I've got into brighter colours. And I actually try, I was just messing around trying out things. So I actually used a bit of cling film here, which you remember from our watercolour experimental days. And I was using, uh, saw a variation of primary colours. So I think I've got Elysian Crimson in here, French Ultramarine, uh, uh, quinacridone gold which I'll show you in a minute and then when things don't quite work in watercolours give yourself that permission of refinding the light so I used a little bit of pastel here to refine the light <coughs> in this picture and I just love the colours I think they work really well so here we are here's the picture I'm going to do it's lovely Chiara who um, has got this lovely curve with the rope B Venus going on and if you notice, I was actually using these Harlequin crayons, which are rather fun, uh, which I like very much, which uh, means you never know what colour it's going to come out, but it does give a bit of a zing to your life drawing. These are called Harlequin pens. I think you can buy them from um, Sea Whites, um, and I like them very much. Uh, so this is a quick sketch, and then because I'm doing it same size, what I did was actually trace it. Here's my tracing. And then to transfer it, rather than go through all that tedious business of going on the back of the tracing paper, what I used was trace down, which is basically posh carbon paper. So here it is. Um, it's basically posh carbon paper. So I put this on here with a nice sharp pencil, and I could transfer it to my painting surface very quickly. So here we are. So trace, 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 press, 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 and then I come up with this uh, outline. I hope you can see it. Trouble with trace down, it can be a bit dark and doesn't erase all the time, but I'm just going to go over this little bit with a rubber to get rid of some of the harsher marks so I can still see what's going on. And if you notice, what I did with the tracing is actually mark out the pattern of light. This is the thing with watercolour, is looking at the pattern of light, because you have to be able to leave uh, that bit white. So here I actually drew around uh, where the shading was and I'm hopefully that will be a guide for when I start painting. I'm just going to go through the colours I'm using. It's a variation on primary colours uh, like the second one I showed you. So I have here my nice little palette and I'll just go through the colours that I'm going to be using. This colour, which I suppose not many people have heard of, is called quinacridone gold. It's very transparent, and you can see it makes this lovely yellow colour, um, and it sort of warms things up. It's, um, can you see that? Quinacridone gold, it's invented by Daniel Smith from Car Paints. He did reds and magentas as well, but it's a transparent colour, and it's just yummy. Very good for landscape painting as well. Uh, and then, I've got a bit of yellow ochre here because I used to use that, but that is actually opaque. So it kind of sits on top of the paper sometimes, but that is also a yellow. And then I've got Elysian Crimson here, which is uh, a crimson, which I think blah, most of you know. So here we are, that's that lovely crimson. So I'm, I'm, And what I'm using, I'm using tubes and I use a lot of paint. So I will get through this quite quickly. This, uh, that's all very wet. This is burnt sienna. And the combination of the two make this lovely warm red. And they're both, ooh, look at that. It's doing all sorts of exciting things now. Um, it makes a very nice red. And they're both really transparent. 
And then I've got here, I'm trying to remember what it is, is this quinacridone? No, sorry, this is indrathrine blue, which is a nice cool blue. You can see, um, and I thought, well, that's a bit on the blue side. Um, <clears throat> so I found it makes a lot of green. So I'm also going to use, um, so I've got French ultramarine as well, which I probably won't use that much, but it is a primary color. And then over here, I have, uh, I think this is indigo, which is a cooler, duller blue. Can you see? So that's got a lovely, hmm, I don't know, it's muted down. So indigo is the color of blue jeans. But that's got a nice oomph to it. I thought that was a bit too blue. And then I always like to have a bit of Payne's Grey, complete with cat hair. You can see that's very dark. So when I want dark passages to define the light, I'll probably use that. And again, that's got a kind of bluish tinge to it, although next to the blues, not so much. Um, and the, yes, yeah, so this is Indrathrene Blue, which I probably am not going to use that much. But this is bas my basic range of colors. Um, so, I probably should turn this over because this will be wet. And it's always used to have a piece of test paper around so you can decide, uh, you can figure out which color, um, how the colors are working when you make a wash. So these are two watercolors, Winsor & Newton. And I like to use those because they do pack a bit of a punch. And I'm going to use my original sketch as my reference. So I'm going to paint from this. So I'm going to start painting now. I've got my original here so I, as my reference. So I will actually respond to my drawing. And then here I've put out the pattern of light. And I am going to start painting. And I have a ghastly feeling I'm going to need some more paint. But luckily they are more or less to hand. <coughs> so... And this is the thing, I haven't done this for a while, uh, and this is the thing uh, that you have to kind of work up ahead of steam, remember how you painted things. So here, what I want is really, really strong colors. And I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. I'm going to put paint directly on uh, the drawing. So I'm going to pick up some of this, this is indigo, and I'm just gonna put her spine in with this. So I'm putting the pigment directly on the paper, here and there, where the darker bits are, like down here. And what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to spray it in the vague hope it doesn't dry terribly much. But this is how you get really impactful colors. You can put the tube directly on the paper. I did learn this from um, Graham Dean, who funny enough, I, we sold our house to, who, um, reinvented the watercolor and changed my life because he just uses watercolor so strongly putting the tube directly on the paper and um, it, you get much more punchy colors so I'm probably going to leave it at that and I'm going to do uh, just give it a gentle spray uh, and then I'm going to start picking up colors so I'm just trying to activate the pigment but you never know what it's going to do. But then it does interesting things as well. So I'm just going to grab a couple of brushes. So I've got a big one and two medium sized ones. And I'm going to really mix up very, my very nice warm red color. So here I've got Elysian Crimson and that's going to be too feeble and it's run out already. And I'm going to put some burnt uh, sienna in there as well. So I've got to just grab a bit more crimson because I know I'm going to use a lot of paint. Uh, <coughs> this method of watercolour uh, uses a lot of paint. So a bit of that and a bit of my burnt sienna. And I'm just going to wet my brush, grab some kitchen towel. And I'm going to go in there. Hooray! So I'm just going in here, looking at the dark areas. But what I want to do is actually I'm going to spray this again because I want this to remain sort of damp. Um, so I'm just going in there looking at where the shadows are. And so then I'm going to pick up, and that's why I need another brush. I'm going to pick up some of the yellow color. Uh, so this is the quinacridone gold. I'm going to slop some of that on, although it's not making much of an impact. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water there. Take that round there. And up here, ooh, I've got a hand to deal with. And then what I'm going to do is actually soften this edge just with water. And remember, you can always use a little bit of pastels 
to buck things up. So can you see, so where I'm touching this um, nice indigo color, it's actually letting uh, the pigment run through the wash I am applying. So this goes down there and I'm going to grab some more of this and then I think I want a bit of yellow over here to be softer so that's where it's lighter and I'm just looking at the shadow on her bottom where the yellow hits the uh, blue of the indigo obviously it's going to turn green so I'm going to try and avoid that mainly but there's a nice dark area just there I'm just going to add a little bit of indigo there I think I need yet another brush on that one yeah. I'll have this one uh, <clears throat> and again I'm softening this edge just soften it slightly and you have to paint really quickly and you have to sort of know what you're doing which is kind of aggravating sometimes because sometimes you forget and I'm just adding water here to give that feeling of almost reflected light there uh, so I'm just a little bit more indigo here ah, too much and then I'm going back in for my red uh, which is here and there's a kind of darkness just there and I'm just going to soften that edge whoa too much and then of course you can use your kitchen towel as a tool which I'm going to do because that's gone too far and then I just want to spread that out a bit and add a bit of, let's try that blue which is bound to turn green so I just want some darkness here and I'm going to just flood that in, the red colour in there. And I should have left well alone. Never mind. Um, so up here, we've got a shoulder blade here. And where I put the thing on, the pigment on the paper, it's actually, uh, it will actually release it once I add water. So I just want to do that and get that going. Let's see what's going on here. And I want a bit more red. This is not my red brush, but never mind. Uh, so up here, ah! another cat hair, uh, up here, and just going down there, and I can just see her shoulder blade, and I've got these marks showing the pattern of light, so that really helps to remember where you want to leave the light bits. So I'm just ooh, adding some more water to soften that edge, but it's gone a little bit mad. So a little bit of tissue paper, uh, and I'm just going to blot some of that away. And you can see you're getting these lovely vibrant colours out of this. And it's very useful if you're painting watercolour, uh, life painting, which is, as I say, one of the hardest things in the world to do, um, is to um, just use a limited palette. And I want that to be a bit darker in here get that indigo to come up and again I'm going to soften the light just here I mean soften the edge just here and ooh, also you see when you're leaving when you paint in a very expressive watercolor way uh, the watercolor will do off go off and do its own thing which is doing over there so I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of my red color the mixture of paints um, of Elysian Crimson and Burnt Sienna and I'm just going in here I want that shadow there showing her leg uh, being distorted by the leg underneath so I can just lift that off and I want a little bit of blue not too much but can you see I'm just picking up pure color whoa maybe that's a bit too much but I'm just going to spread that out and see what happens and go down here and it's turned to mud and over here so I'm just going to soften that edge a little bit this, so that color is, <laughs> is all colors uh, that are available so again I'm picking up the red and I just want to go ah, in here and you can see I've got great globs of paint on my brush so I'm just going to go around here and Uh, there we go 
go, that's better. So that's gone back to the nice zinginess of the colours. And again, the darkest point of any shadow is generally uh, on the edge. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that, pop that in there, show what her knees are up to, pop that there, and then I'm going to soften that edge. And then I've got something going on here, and luckily I've got some watercolour sloshing around there. So if I move that around, what's going to happen? No, that's no good. So I'm just going to pick up some of my indigo here. I want that there. But then, uh, right, sorry for that interruption. Ooh, you can't see what's going on in the foot. Let's have a push that up. And you can see I'm getting just concentrating on that pattern of light. And with watercolour, again, it's this thing, painting for the bin is not to mind. So you have to practice and you have to not mind when things go wrong or embrace it. There are no mistakes, just a happy accident. So I'm just going in here and I want to catch that calf muscle. And actually, uh, sometimes when you make your work a little bit ambiguous, it's actually more satisfying to the viewer if you've got bits undone or bits undefined, because they fill it all in, and it's all perfect. So here I'm just trying to indicate what her foot's up to. So I've got the main uh, colour I'm using, I suppose, is this nice wash. Um, uh, the nice red colours. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of darkness. I've got some kitchen towel uh, around here. I just want to find that a bit more. Yeah. Now I'm getting involved with the painting, I'm actually going to block that a bit because I want to show what her legs are up to and I'll work on that in a minute. Uh, <coughs> so here I'm just going to add a little bit of indi indigo directly from the tube almost, or from my palette, but I'm not mixing up a wash. And then I just want ooh, to do that. And you do end up drawing with the brush a lot. And actually, I sort of left this area alone. It's now dry, so I can't, I shouldn't really fiddle with it, but I'm going to. Don't, don't, don't. So I'm just going to add a bit of water there just to lighten that area. And I'm going to leave it alone. Yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. It's this thing of um, trying not to overwork a watercolour. So a lot of these places, the watercolour has done the work itself. I've got an arm over here which is this, I'm going to use this red colour again. Eh. I'm going to leave the hand for later because it's rather detailed and I want to be able to get some of the detail in, so I need that to be dry. And I'm coming up here, uh, over here. And you see, when I actually add water, it gets a bit feeble, so I'm going to pick up some of that strong pigment again and go in here, and over there, and we've got this nice sweeping line goes down here, which is the shadow, and actually I'm just going to wash that gently, no, that's not the thing to do at all. Uh, so again, I'm picking up some indigo, so I want to define her arm, so I've got this very dark colour here, and actually I want to have it here as well, to indicate the shadows.
So here I've just put the back background on a nice soft wash with lots of water and I'm just going to take my brush along here to soften that edge but I don't want to lose her shape so I'm just going to go in there with my kitchen towel and make that edge a little bit softer and over here as well. There we go. So we've got this nice lovely female shape going in there and I'm just going to blot that edge so it's not quite so harsh. And there we go, I think. The trick with watercolour is not fiddle, which I am now doing, and I can come back once it's dry <coughs> and have a go with my little bristly brush. So I'm just going to take that away <coughs> and I can tidy up that edge, I hope with a bit of pastel, but I'll have to wait for that to dry to show you. And then here, this is edge is a little bit harsh, so again I'm going to take my little bristly brush and just soften that edge a little bit, and also around the foot here. So I just want that to be a little bit softer, so I'm just having a bit of a scratch, a scratch <coughs> and try to define these areas of shadow so it's a little bit softer along here and trying not to fiddle too much. I think I need some new kitchen towel. And <coughs> I wanted to find the face a little bit more but I may have to wait for that to dry. Let's have a go. So I just want to pick up a little tiny bit of indigo I think and go in there and sort of define her hair and her neck and then come down here and there and spread that out. Hmm. <coughs> and my great motto is don't fiddle with watercolour. So I may stop now. Just to find that. I just want to draw that edge with the brush. And just flood it with water. And along here too. Well, I think I think I'll leave it. I think I will leave it because I know a lot of it is going to <coughs> go to hell in the handbasket if I fiddle too much. And look, what am I doing? I'm fiddling. And also, a watercolor does change as it dries, so you never know what it quite is what it's going to do. But I think I will leave it there. Uh, when I was painting those pictures. Uh, that. I'm going to have a bit of a blot and see what happens. I'm going to leave it to dry now. This method of painting does use up a lot of paint but it's good fun and the big thing about watercolours I think is to catch the light on the figure or whatever you're painting. So in this case I have actually left her white and I would do that in all my work. I would leave the light to be white. I want it to be white. I want to have that really strong contrast of tones. Okay, thank you. See you next time.